to see you here this morning. I'm glad to be in God's house. I know I say that every Sunday, but it's true. There are a lot of places we could be this morning, and I want to be here this morning, and I'm thankful for that. Uh, there's a song that uh, has been on my mind this week. I think I think y'all sang it before. I can't remember the name of it. But it says, take me back to the place that feels like home, to the place I can depend on, to the faith that's in my bones. Take me back to a preacher and a verse where they've seen me at my worst, to the love I had at first. Oh, I want to go to church. It's more than an obligation. It's our foundation, the family of God. I know it's hard, but we need each other. We're sisters and we're brothers. I am thankful to be in God's house this morning. I look forward to church. I'm thankful that I feel like I'm at home when I come to church. I feel like I'm grounded when I'm here. Uh, I look around and I see some of the faces that I've seen my entire life coming to church. And I see a lot of faces that have changed. But one thing remains the same. This is the place where the Word of God has been taught my entire life. Uh, we're not perfect here, but it's a place to come and grow in the Lord. And it's a place to be imperfect. Because if you're looking to a perfect place, you're not going to find any place on this earth. <laughs> there have been times I couldn't wait to get to church because I knew there were going to there, be people there who would pray for me when I couldn't pray for myself. I look forward to coming uh, to have corporate worship and to hear the word of the Lord ministered. And I know you can do these things at home. I know you can turn on the TV and you can hear the word of God minister. And I have been blessed by doing that. I know you can worship the Lord at home, but there's a reason the Bible itself says in Hebrews 10 and 25, not to give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but to encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching, and I believe the day is approaching. We need each other. Amen. This building is not our final stopping place. It's just a place for us to meet together until we reach our home together with Him. And I know if we were to move, we have to find another place to go, move to another city, we could find another church to attend. And that's the wonderful thing about the family of God. When we go to another church, it's like finding home again. And I'm thankful that wherever you go, you've got a family because we know Jesus and we've got brothers and sisters there. Um, and I'm looking forward to spending time this morning with you and one day in eternity with you because we've got a home in our Father's house, um, and I, I know this is our Father's house, but we have a home in heaven that we are going to. Amen. I want you to stand with us, sing with us, come and go with me to our Father's house. Father's house to my father's house to my father's house. 
I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We have come to worship the Lord.
Le amor cuán grande es el de Cristo. Así es. Can you say amen? amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Praise the Lord. It's a blessing. You know, there are some people who wish they could be in the house of the Lord today. They cannot. Maybe you've been there before. You wanted to be in the house of the Lord, but you just, you couldn't. You couldn't. It, wouldn't, it just wasn't possible. And you really wanted to be in the house of the Lord. If you've ever been there, say amen. Amen. I've been there before. And uh, so when we could come to the house of the Lord, we should count it a blessing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Glenn, I was going to have you read something for me today, and I think I still will. So if you'll come, Sister Glenn is going to share something with us real quickly. As many of you know, this was an interesting week in our nation. Um, there was an answer to prayer, to prayers that have been lifted up to the Lord for many, many years. I have a lot I can say about what happened this week, but um, I wanted Glennon to share something. This is a statement by Dr. Tony Evans. Dr. Tony Evans is a well-respected minister, teacher, author. He's just a wonderful man of God with a wonderful heart of love. So give your attention to Sister Glenn as she shares a statement from Dr. Tony Evans. Now I may be getting ahead of him a little bit. I don't know if he's going to do anything after I read this. But I think that we just need to give a huge, loud shout of praise to the Lord for answering prayer. Roe versus Wade was overturned this weekend. God did that. <laughs> Don't give up. Don't give up. Because God has a time and He has a plan. Hold on. That's, a, that's in my message somewhere. Don't give up. No, 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 no te rindas. No te rindas. Don't give up. Don't give up. Amen. 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 No te rindas. So now that was all. That was all me, not Dr. Evans. <clears throat> not Dr. Evans. I joined with the countless voices heard today as well as those yet to be heard, yet to be heard someday. Those who will now, I've got to do this without crying, who will now have the opportunity to do so through the gift of life in giving God the glory for his sovereign hand in this historical decision by our Supreme Court. Christians everywhere ought to humbly celebrate this decision to overturn the 1973 ruling of Roe versus Wade. This decision removes the federal constitutional right to an abortion and returns abortion laws to the states some of which plan to restrict abort, uh, a ban abortion to get a shoot. Some of which plan to restrict or ban abortion altogether. Yeah, right. In addition to the saving of countless lives of our collective humanity, this decision also positions us more fully to intercede on behalf of God's mercy on our nation in order to reverse the crime epidemic. This is so because scripture states that when innocent blood is shed, we can expect more innocent blood in the society to be shed through violence and oppression. That's in Psalms 106 and Joel 3. Thus, a decrease in the number of abortions can lead to a decrease in violent crime. At the heart of the abortion debate stands the image of God. Attacking the unborn is tantamount to attacking God since all life is created in his image, Genesis 1, 26 to 28, including life developing in the womb, Psalm 139. While celebrating and giving God praise for his movement in this momentous space and time, we must also not lose sight of the fact that the image of God equally applies to protecting the dignity of people once they are born, James 3 and Psalms 8. Therefore, Anything that demeans the value of people's lives must be addressed with the same fervor and passion that has been given to preserving the life of the unborn. All forms of the denial of justice and human dignity, whether racism, classism, or de degradation of any kind, must be viewed and addressed in terms of and with respect to the image of God. It is time for God's people to lead the way in promoting a whole life agenda from the womb to the tomb. As we simultaneously proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and the gift of his forgiveness he offers to all who come to him for it. While doing so, may we never forget to show compassion to those who have experienced abortion 
as well as kindness to those who believe differently than we do on this issue or any other issue. Lastly, men, my statement to you remains as it has always been. You are to live responsible lives in your actions and decisions. Men should be held personally and financially accountable for the children they help to produce, whether planned or unplanned. But most importantly, women should never have to bear the challenges of an unplanned pregnancy on their own. We, as the body of Christ, should come alongside those in need through spiritual and tangible support. Thank you, Sister Glenn. Thank you, Dr. Evans. Give the Lord a cheer. Thank you, Jesus. A few minutes from now, I may sing this song, but I think I'm going to sing it down too. Chapter 5, nuestro texto se encuentra en el capítulo 5 de Marcos. And this story is also found in Luke chapter 8 and Matthew chapter 9. Esta historia también se encuentra en Lucas capítulo 8 y Mateo capítulo 9. Lord, help us as we hear the word of God today. Help us as we hear the word of God. Feed us, I pray, O oh God. Oh Lord, you knew who would be here. You knew, Lord, those that are sitting here right now that, that need a touch from you. They need to reach out. They need to be reaching out to you, Lord, pressing in. So, Lord, speak to us through your holy word, for your glory. In the name of Jesus, can you say amen? I'm reading today from the New Living Translation in English in the Reina Valera Antigua in Espanol. Mark chapter 5, verse 21. Are you with me, Sister Glenna? Mark chapter 5, verse 21. Jesus got into the boat again and went back to the other side of the lake where a large crowd gathered around him on the shore. Y pasando otra vez Jesús en un barco a la otra parte, se junto al gran compañía 
y estaba junto a la mar. Verse 22. Then a leader of the local synagogue, whose name was Jairus, arrived. When he saw Jesus, he fell down at his feet. Y vino uno de los príncipes de la sinagoga, llamado Jairo, y luego que le vio, se postró a sus pies. Verse 23. Pleading fervently with him. My little daughter is dying, he said. Please come and lay your hands on her. Heal her so she can live. Y le rogaba mucho diciendo, Mija está la muerte. Ven y pondrás las manos sobre ella para que sea salva y vivirá. Verse 24, Jesus went with him and all the people followed, crowding around him. Can you see the scene? Y fue con él y le seguía gran compañía y le apretaban. Now you can read the rest of the story about the daughter of the synagogue at the end of this chapter, Mark, chapter 5. Does anyone know how the story ends? She was already dead, and then Jesus spoke life into her, and she lived. So that's the message Luna was talking about earlier when she said, don't give up. You have that slide, Luna? Don't give up. No te rindas. Don't give up. Sometimes we feel like giving up. Don't give up. I think all of us have felt like giving up. The enemy attacks our mind. He says, you might as well just give up. You might as well just give up. I got news for you today. According to the word of God, the devil is a liar. Amen? And he's the father of lies. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. So now I want to share with you a story within a story. Because while Jesus was on his way to perform this miracle of life, here's what happened. Verse 25. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. 12 years. Wow. That's a long time. Let's see. This is 2022. So 12 years ago, some math genius here can help me out. 20, 12 years ago was 2010. That's before I came here. 2010. So just imagine if ever since before I came to pastor this church, a year before I came to pastor this church, just imagine that you had a bleeding problem. That's a tough problem. Mucho gracias, nieto. Thank you, grandson. Anyone thirsty? Tienes sed? I get water for everybody. I must have There's more water. 12 years. She suffered for 12 years. Y una mujer que estaba con flujo de sangre 12 años hacía. 12 years. Now notice, we don't know this woman's name. Isn't that interesting? There's a lot of people in the Bible who are unnamed. There are a lot of women in the Bible who are unnamed. But Sister Annie, wouldn't you like to go to heaven and meet this woman that had the issue of blood? And we know the story how she pressed in and she was healed. Verse 26 in Mark 5 explains, She had suffered a great deal from many doctors. Y había sufrido mucho de muchos médicos. Anyone here ever suffered from a doctor? <laughs> You ever go to a doctor and the test is painful? Yeah. Well, I don't want to talk about some of the painful procedures I've had because you might be facing them and you might think, I don't want to go through it. But she had suffered for 12 years. Now, I want you to think about something. She did not have modern medicine. So she wasn't going through a CAT scan or an MRI. There is no telling what those quacks, I'm sorry, there's no telling what those doctors were doing for those 12 years. But she had suffered, y había sufrido mucho. She suffered a great deal from many doctors, de muchos médicos. And over the years, she had spent everything she had to pay them. But she'd gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. Y había sufrido mucho de muchos médicos y había 
gastado todo lo que tenía, everything she had, y nada había aprovechado, antes le iba peor. She's worse. Have you ever been to a doctor and they try to treatment and instead of feeling better, you feel worse? Charlotte, you'd like to testify? <laughs> a lot of us could testify to that, couldn't we? Couldn't we? Sometimes, uh, I'm not against doctors, medical, health care, thank God for them, but I think we've all, we've all been there. God help us. She'd been through this for 12 years, and, and she'd spent everything she had to pay them. How'd you like that? You run out of money. <laughs> I remember when my uh, shoulder was frozen. Some of you remember a few years ago, this shoulder, I could only move this arm this high, and they decided to do physical therapy, and after months and months and months, I finally, I finally got to where I could move this shoulder. And I remember I was doing physical therapy, and uh, one day I went to physical therapy, and I was paying the bill, because I got free physical therapy once I paid my deductible. So I went there one time with this shoulder and they said, this is your last visit. I said, yeah, but I just paid my deductible. Now I can do it for free. They said, you don't need any more physical therapy. <laughs> and then you remember when I had surgery on this shoulder, remember, some of you remember? And uh, then I went to physical therapy for this shoulder. And I'd already met my deductible because I had two surgeries that year. And uh, one day I went to physical therapy and Carlisle, they said, this is your last physical therapy visit. And I said, oh, is, is that, that's, that's all you can do? And they said, that's all your insurance covers. <laughs> My goodness. She didn't have insurance back then. I don't know if she was better or worse than we, than we are. <laughs> but she spent all her money, 12 years. And instead of being better, what was she? Worse. worse. Verse 27. She had heard about Jesus. So she came up behind him through the crowd. She pressed in through the crowd and touched his robe. Como oyó hablar de Jesús, llegó por detrás entre la compañía y tocó su vestido. She pressed her way through the crowd. She touched him. Why did she do this? Verse 28 explains it. For she thought to herself, Porque decía, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Si tocare tan solamente su vestido, seré salva. Touching Jesus, tocando a Jesús. You see, although this woman was pressing her way through the crowd, and she could see Jesus, she had her eye on Jesus, she was trying to make her way to Jesus. She was not concerned about the crowd at all. Now, maybe you miss this when you read this story, but if she was concerned about what other people thought, if she was concerned about the crowd, she would not have pushed through there. Because you see, in that day, somebody say, God bless our pastor. God bless our pastor. Thank you. In that day, a bleeding woman was considered unclean. I know that's a little plain talk, but when a woman, if a woman was bleeding, a woman was considered unclean. She was not supposed to touch anyone. No one was supposed to touch her. You hear that? No one was supposed to touch her, and she was not supposed to touch anyone. And you think with that crowd of people, she probably had a reputation, 12 years bleeding, spending all her money. Now she was worse off. People probably knew. So I wonder if when she was pressing through the crowd, I wonder if they made a pass for her. And I wonder if they thought, is she going to touch Jesus? <laughs> because she wasn't supposed to touch anyone. She was unclean. She was unclean. Maybe you're here today and you're thinking, you know what, I don't, spiritually, I don't feel clean. I don't feel clean. But you know what she said? She said, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Si tocare tan solamente su vestido, seré salvo. If I can just touch him. Just touch him. See, she wasn't concerned about everybody around her. Her focus was on Jesus. Sometimes we're in the house of the Lord and we're thinking about other people. Sometimes the Spirit of God may move on you and you may be sitting there 
And Jim, you may feel like, I need to go pray now. I need to go to that altar and pray. You know what you need to do, Jim? Yes, sir. Go to that altar and pray. But sometimes the Lord moves on us and we think, what's the pastor going to think? What's somebody else going to think? What's anybody else going to think? This woman didn't care what people thought. She had, she had got to a point where she said, enough is enough. Some of you are there today. He said, I, I'm done with this, through with this. Enough is enough. And the enemy's going to throw all kinds of solutions on you. And I got news for you. There is a solution. Somebody tell me his name. Jesus. Jesus. Verse 29. Immediately, the bleeding stopped. Twelve years she had this bleeding problem. Spent all her money. She was worse. But immediately, the bleeding stopped. She could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Y luego la fuente de su sangre se secó. Y sintió en el cuerpo que estaba sana de aquel azote. Can you say Gloria a Dios? Gloria, Gloria a Dios. Immediately, as soon as the woman touches Jesus, the bleeding stops. And she knows she's been healed. Now, I know God can heal gradually. God can heal with the help of medicine. God can heal with the help of surgery. But you, want, you know what else my God can do? He can heal head and pen. He can heal instantly. He can do that. As soon as she touched Jesus, her bleeding stopped. She knew she was healed. In an instant, Jesus does what no doctor in 12 years had been able to do. Now remember, this woman was unclean. Somebody say unclean. You don't want to. You don't want to touch it. It's it's unclean. Brian Cole said he say not clean. Sucio, sucio, sucia. Ella, ella fue sucia. She was unclean. So why was she? Why was she considered unclean? Because they were concerned that if this woman touched Judah, then Judah could have an issue. There's some, there's, you know, there's, there's some, there, blood can transmit disease. She was unclean. Well, guess what happened? When she touched Jesus, did Jesus become unclean? No. See, her touching Jesus did not make Jesus unclean, but he made her clean. Here's the rest of the story, Mark 5, 30. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my robe? Y luego Jesús, conociendo en sí mismo la virtud que había salido de él, volviéndose a la compañía, dijo, ¿Quién ha tocado mis vestidos? His disciples said to him, Look at this crowd pressing around. How can you ask who touched me? Y le dijeron sus discípulos, ¿Ves que la multitud te aprieta? Y dices, ¿Quién me ha tocado? They thought the Lord was being silly. They thought the Lord didn't know what was going on. Maybe you never thought that way. <laughs> you looked around and said, come on, God, don't you know what's going on? Oh, yeah, he knows what's going on. Verse 32, but he kept looking around to see who had done it. Y él miraba alrededor para ver a la que había hecho esto. Verse 33, then the frightened woman. Yes, she was frightened. She'd been healed. She'd been bleeding for 12 years, and instantly she knew she was healed. She was frightened when Jesus said, who touched me? The frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. Entonces la mujer, teniendo y temblando, sabiendo lo que en sí había sido hecho, vino y se, y se postró delante de él y le dijo toda la verdad. All the truth. Verse 3, I love verse 34. And he, Jesus, said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. Y él le dijo, Hija, tu fe te ha hecho salva. Ve en paz y queda sana de tu azote. Touching Jesus. Tocando a Jesús. 
I have a word that somebody needs to hear today. God knew you would be here, so he wants you to hear this. When you think about this story, I want you to understand this from the word of God. Jesus is not too busy for you. Jesus no está muy ocupado para ti. He's not too busy for you. You may think, well, God, he doesn't care about me. <laughs> He's too busy for me. You know, think about it. If we all prayed, every one of us in this building prayed at the same time, you know, God would hear all of our prayers at the same time. How does he do that? He's God. He's God. He's not too busy for you. Jesus is not too busy for you. Jesus no está muy ocupado para ti. And here's something else I want you to think about today. Desperate times call for what? Desperate measures. Tiempos desesperados requieren medidas desesperadas. When you're really desperate, you'll do anything. You might elbow your way through the crowd. Glenda, when I think of elbowing through the crowd, you know what I think about? No, not 50 miles of elbow room. <laughs> That's a song. I think about uh, Glenna and her mother. And I don't even know if we were married yet, but I went to Sears, close to your house in Colorado Springs, and they had some kind of sale, and the stuff was all over the, some big table. And I went with these ladies, and I mean to tell you, they pressed in. <laughs> I stood there and my sweet wife-to-be and my sweet mother-in-law-to-be pushed their way through the crowd. And we're, I mean, and all the ladies, it just, it seemed like a mob, an organized mob scene. No one was hurting each other, but there were elbows moving. I mean, when, when a woman got, was making her way to that table, you knew where she was going. She was desperate. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Tiempos desesperados requieren medidas desesperadas. That's a hard word to say. Desesperadas. <laughs> this woman was desperate, wasn't she? Twelve years, no solution, getting worse, not better. So what did she do? She thought, if I can just get to Jesus. Maybe you're thinking that this morning. If I can just get in touch with Jesus. If I can just... Spiritually, if I can just touch it well, here's my question for you today. Are you desperate for God? Estás desesperado por Dios? Are you desperate? Do you really want an answer? Do you really have to have a solution? Have you reached the point where you said enough is enough? No one else can solve your problem. I believe this woman knew that no one could help her. Doctors had tried. She spent all her money. All her money was gone. She was worse and not better. And so she thought, I believe Jesus has the answer. Because if you're desperate for God, touching Jesus is the answer. Tocar a Jesús es la respuesta. Here's what James says. James 4 and 8. Santiago Cuatro, ocho. Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Allegaos a Dios, y Él se allegará a vosotros. Pablo, por favor, lea este verso para mí. Allegaos a Dios, y Él se allegará a vosotros. Una otra vez, por favor. No, in Spanish. Allegaos a Dios y Él se allegará a vosotros. Y ahora en inglés, si tú puedes. Probablemente Brian puede. Brian, por favor, lee este verso para mí. Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Y ahora en español. Allegados a Dios y Él se allegará. Una otra vez. Una otra vez. In English and in Spanish. Draw a Dios and Él se allegará near to you. I missed it. He did mix it up. <laughs> hey, are you making fun of the way I preach? <laughs> muchas gracias, muchas gracias. Draw near to God. And it won't make any difference. 
Draw near to God, and you will be worse instead of better. Is that what it says? Draw near to God, you're just wasting your time. Is that what the Word of God says? No. Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Allegaos a Dios, y Él se allegará a vosotros. Amen. Play for me now. While we sing this song again, I think somebody needs to draw near to God. Maybe you'll pray at your seat, maybe you'll pray at the altar, but I encourage you to be like this woman with the issue of love. Press into Him. Like the woman She was unclean. It didn't matter. She was making her way to Jesus. Lord, we're making our way to you right now, Jesus. We ask you to touch us, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God, touch us. Touch us for your glory. Touch us for your glory, Jesus. 
help these Sister Mary do, I'd like to be prayed for. Amen. Sister Mary just waiting for some tests. They're trying to determine whether there is cancer or not, whether there is cancer or there isn't cancer. And we're just going to pray and believe with her that cancer won't be an option. That healing will be an option. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Will you pray with me? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Master of this universe. You're greater than cancer. You're greater than any illness. Oh God, you made this body. You can heal this body, Jesus. Lord, I trust you, God. I agree with my sister. Oh God, we stand upon your word. Pray, Lord, that the gift of healing would be exercised right now in Mary Jo. That the gift of faith would be exercised, Lord. A faith that we don't have, that you have more, that you can work through us. I pray the gift of miracles would be exercised, God. Oh, God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray for a good report, God. A good report. In the name of Jesus. Lord, because we place this in your hands, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We believe in you, God. We believe that you are. We believe that you're a rewarder than the seek you. Oh, God, we stand on your word. We stand on your truth. We stand on your promises. We're leaning into you, God. We're pressing into you right now, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we believe that if you will just touch us, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make your whole in the name of Jesus and for your glory. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We sing a
feel sick. Oh God, free the oppressed. Set the prisoners free. Break chains and bonds. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen.